it's Lindsay and welcome back to my channel. Today I am doing another part in my ongoing writing experiment, I guess it's a series now because this is the second astrology sign that I'm doing, where I pick an astrological zodiac sign and I write based like that sign. <laughs> per my last video where all of you voted on what sign you wanted me to write like next, Scorpio won, so here we are. Basically how this works is I take an astrology sign and I look up all of the buzzwords surrounding that sign or personality traits that are typical of that zodiac. And then I take those traits and I transmute them into either writing prompts, creative discussions, something along those lines that has to do with either my book or writing. You'll see what I'm talking about, just hang in there. So for those of you who may not be familiar with the archetype of the Scorpio, I'm gonna read you a little description. The Scorpio is the most intense sign of the zodiac and is associated with sexual activity and with the symbolism of death and rebirth. There will be no death, there will be no sex. <laughs> This is right a G, folks. Scorpios have great personal magnetism and great powers of persuasion or even the ability to coerce others. Their will is strong and they let nothing stand in their way of achieving their goals. They may suffer in life, but their pain leads to important personal transformation. And then it goes on to say basically they are a water sign. Water signs are all about deep emotions, connections, healing, nurturing, things like that. And they are a fixed sign in astrology. That just means basically a lot of times they're stuck in their ways and it's harder to change, even though it is possible. Um, and they're ruled by Mars and Pluto, which is interesting because Pluto is symbolic of change and like rebirth growth, which leading back to writing is perfect because we are working on draft two of my spooky middle grade book currently being called Tobe, which stands for the odd book. And like the great powerful Pluto, <laughs> We need powerful transformation uh, with this draft to make it into something. My goal for this vlog is to finish the first act of Tobe in my second draft. This video will also be coinciding with NaNoWriMo and my goal for NaNo was to finish the first act. So we'll be trying to finish that. I'm thinking the video is gonna run a bit over into December, which is fine. And uh, I guess we'll see if we win NaNo during this video. <laughs> also, uh, how writing like a Scorpio affects my productivity. So the buzzwords or personality traits of a Scorpio that I have chosen to change into creative prompts for my writing are passionate, persistent, deep slash introspective, and fearless. I hope that all made sense, uh, but I think as the video goes, you'll kind of figure out how it works. Again, I've done this once before, in my writing like a Sagittarius vlog, which I think was very fun. I actually went on vacation because Sagittarius like to travel. So maybe check that out. I'll link it down below for you. But let's go ahead and dive into <laughs> deep, introspective Scorpio waters. Good morning. <laughs> I just woke up. Uh, so today is officially the last day of November. So I really want to push these sprints into hyperdrive uh, and try to finish chapter four because my goal for NaNoWriMo was to finish the first act of Tobe. I consider the inciting incident happening the end of act one and so that's at the end of chapter four so I need to finish it today which is gonna be a lot of work but I want to try and I feel like just doing this is a very Scorpio thing to do like just very mm, persistent and drive through it and like you know get it done. I thought we would look into the Scorpio foods, drinks, all the fun things on Pinterest, right? Because I gotta find something to fuel me through all these intense sprints. All right, winter comfort foods. Scorpio is the French dip. Don't hate it, don't love it. Signs as favorite foods, a bagel. <laughs> That's a very interesting choice. I do like bagels though. I mean, any kind of carbs, I'm there. Signs as pastries. Ooh, a chocolate croissant. <laughs> I can definitely find something like that. Ooh, like the bear claws from Panera. Mm, 
I can maybe get one of those today. Also, I'm filming this during Thanksgiving week, so <laughs> yeah, we're gonna gain like 10 pounds. There's a whole website that's full of them. Maybe I'll try that. From pizza to cereal, here's what to eat based on your astrology sign. <laughs> okay, let's do it. The sign is favorite food, bagel, we saw that one. The sign is condiments, oh boy. <laughs> Scorpio is ranch. <laughs> It's funny they're not something more spicy. I feel like ranch is like so basic. Signs as least favorite food. Well, I can tell you right now, a beet is my least favorite food in the world. So Pisces, hmm, sorry. A pickle, I do like pickles. Also, I'm, I'm a Sag and I do like hard boiled eggs. So, okay. <laughs> the sign is pastries. We saw this one. The sign is frozen foods. Ooh, ice cream. I mean, I love ice cream. Signs as cereals. I haven't had cereal in so long. Hashi Go Lean Crunch. Signs as bagels. Apparently, Scorpio is all bagel, so can't go wrong here, right? Scorpio, a salt bagel. Because <laughs> y'all so salty. Signs as fruit. Scorpio is a strawberry. Aww. Because y'all so acidic. <laughs> Just kidding. Actually, that's funny that Sagittarius is a pear because I think pears are like maybe my favorite fruit the signs as sandwiches a grilled cheese i love grilled cheese oh my gosh i have so many good ideas of what to eat today the signs as soups broccoli cheddar oh we could just go to panera we could just go to panera i could get broccoli cheddar soup i could get a grilled cheese and i could get one of those bear claw chocolate croissant things oh my gosh is that what we're doing today it might be okay and real quick let's check our um starbucks drink we should get so this one is saying i am whatever this is i don't know but it looks fabulous i'm gonna say that it looks like a chocolatey mocha amazement this one is saying i'm an espresso shot i do like a good espresso shot this one is a cold brew i don't love cold brew but i mean i think the idea behind this is it's just anything dark, right? I think what I'm gonna do is just go to Starbucks and find something dark, either with like a lot of caffeine or like a lot of chocolate, and I'll be good. I think that'll be, that'll be fine. Now let's figure out some clothes. <laughs> I'm a little scared for this because, you know, everything's gonna be a little bit dark, a little bit grungy, I think, but <sighs> we're gonna give it a shot. Okay, <laughs> here we are. I'm sure I can put something together that's somewhat like this. I'm seeing a lot of graphic tees, which I don't know if I have any of those, but maybe my husband does. A lot of flannels, of course, a lot of dark muted tones. I mean, I'll try, I'll try, we'll find it, we'll find a way. Um, <laughs> ma'am, ma'am, are you okay? <laughs> are you all okay? Scorpios, are you okay? Okay, so Scorpio, look one. This is kind of what I put together. I noticed in all the pictures there was a lot of maroon and a lot of layered overlay, like kind of sexy but sporty. So that's kind of what I ended up going with for this one. Hi, champ. <laughs> Chompy is a Leo. And this little guy is a cancer because him's your mama's boy. And this lady is also a Leo, which makes a ton of sense. <laughs> but anyway, I'll show you some of the details. So I got this onyx crystal necklace because I just felt like that made a lot of sense. You know, Scorpios are deep. They need to protect themselves emotionally. I got these little like gunmetal cross earrings in. I painted my nails to match my outfit. Some more black and white rings and then I just have uh, a little half t-shirt over a slip with some white tennies so <laughs> let me go try the other one you guys will have to tell me which one's your favorite in the comments now, I feel like I like this one better I have to hunch because I'm wearing heels <laughs> which is the first time I've worn heels since I sprained my ankle so let's hope I don't die you know but <laughs> anything for the vine but I've got these like high-waisted pants and a little cutout tee and then a big chunky flannel over it, so I don't know. I don't know, what do you Scorpios think? Am I pulling off your edgy, deep, emotional vibes? <laughs> I 
I feel like I need to sit down to talk to you guys. Um, <laughs> I know the whole point of this was doing something that scares me, but I'm like really uncomfortable, which is the point of this. But I'm very uncomfortable. Um, I'm like, I've been working on this chapter for like an, I don't even know, like two and a half hours. And <laughs> Chauncey's trying to get behind me. It's just a lot more of a mess. Not a mess. It just, I, I can't stand to send something that has obvious flaws. <laughs> it like really bothers me. And the pacing in my first chapter is very off in this draft. Like I know I can make it better, but right now it's just off. And so I'm basically like playing Tetris or like moving puzzle pieces around, trying to fit in like description or backstory or world building just in places better. <laughs> so that there can be a little bit of action and flow to the plot. And it's just taking a lot of work. And I know my critique partner I'm gonna send this to, like, she'll understand. <laughs> she'll, she'll not care. She'll be able to be like, oh yeah, you can fix this and you realize it's wrong, so that's good. But like, I just, I want it to be better before I send it to anyone. And I know that that's silly, <laughs> but I just can't stand the idea of people knowing that I am flawed. But um, I'm gonna keep working on it and then I am going to, I'm gonna send it to her tonight no matter what I have. done and that was kind of scary. I'm not used to showing people such a early draft that's messy and probably still gonna change because I haven't even completed the full second draft of the book and things in the end might have trickle effects that make the things in the beginning change. It's fine. It's fine. I love my critique partner and I know she's not gonna leave me no matter what. <laughs> right? She sends me her second draft actually all the time so this should be fine. She just drafts a lot cleaner than I do <laughs> so it, it's fine it's fine I did something that scared me I went out of my comfort zone I acted Scorpio and I'm proud of myself all right so we're too lazy <laughs> to get out this morning it's like the day after Thanksgiving I'm retired um, but I want to get started on some Scorpio stuff so we are ordering takeout breakfast and we got basically the equivalent of that chocolatey dark drink from Starbucks. Are you excited to try it? <laughs> All right, we got it in. It um <laughs> looks very interesting. Does it taste like Scorpio? Does it taste like angst? And depression. I mean, it's really chocolatey, so. It matches your happy. I'm more like a caramel chocolate, so it's okay. It tastes like a chocolate shake, which is like a hint of coffee. We also got um, breakfast bagel sandwiches because apparently Scorpios are bagels because y'all got a hole in the middle where your heart should be. There's the proof. It looks delicious. I mean, I'm really drawn to it. And I'm apparently very drawn to um, Scorpios, so. <sighs> they unevenly cut my bagel. Is that a problem? Look at the unevenness of that. <laughs> Good thing you're not a Virgo. <laughs> so let's chat about. <laughs> I made a list of things that I love about Tobe and that I'm very passionate about the book and why I'm passionate about the book to help myself continue to go when things get really rough with this book which nothing has been easy with this book. Going through this list I'm really seeing why this was such a good idea. It's making me excited about the book all over again and honestly I really recommend doing this. Like make a list when you're struggling of why you're passionate about the thing you're working on. And all of a sudden you'll be like, oh, okay, yeah, I can do this. So the first thing, old people. There's a lot of old people in this story. I love grandparents so much. 
<laughs> they're my favorite type of people and like I just aspire to be a grandma. I love the grouchiness, the crotchetiness, the knitting, um, just, just the whole vibe of being geriatric. So some of this I actually can't share because it is a little bit spoilery and things that my publisher wants me to keep hushed up just for now um, because they're gonna be part of like the commercial pitch that they want to do stuff with so but just know there are some things that have to do with that that I love very much about the story the next thing is it is a haunted house story and I love haunted house stories especially in middle grade they just are nostalgic for me for some reason I also love that my plot is so twisty it is one of the things that I am most proud of I think that this is the yeah this is the most complex plot that I've ever had and with more twists than any book I've ever written so I'm really proud of that and I love reading books like this that have twist on twist on twist and I, I can't wait to read the final product so just thinking about that really makes me motivated and really reminds me like why I'm passionate about the story oh yeah and the narrator the narrator itself uh <laughs> is so kooky so funny it's very very challenging for me uh which is another thing that I like to do I like every book I write every book I write I want to be you know challenging myself to get better uh, and writing with this type of narration style has definitely done that next there is the fact that there is um some migraine rep in here and my main character has chronic migraines she also has a lot of the nerve issues that i have as well and i have never read a book with uh all of my <laughs> disabilities and chronic illnesses all packed into one um i think i'm just really unique in that sense that i have so many things happening from here up you know but uh I think it'll be really fun to see that in a kid's book and I'm really passionate about like you know maybe there's one reader out there who actually has what I have and uh sees that and it makes them feel seen and I feel like that is very important oh and again I put in the ticking time bomb trope which is the idea where you have a set deadline where something bad or something big is going to happen and uh time is like counting down the main character only has so many hours or so many days or whatever to get this thing done i did the same thing in the glass which and i really like it i think it helped with the pacing and keeping it so tight and so fun and so intense oh and then there is the sidekick character all you need to know about him is his name is barnabas specifically barnabas lee isaac montgomery the third and his greatest goal in life is to be a mortician. He's everything I am and everything I'm not. I really love the relationship that I built between my main character and her father or like older brother figure um, who took her in. I think it's really beautiful. It's really complex. I love that my main character is such a mess. <laughs> That's another thing too. She's not a nice girl. And in fact, the narrator tells you many times throughout the book to remind you that this is not <laughs> this is not a nice little girl that you're reading a story about she's definitely like an anti-hero of the story and uh has a lot to learn but i i enjoy how messy she is and then last but not least the character of babette who is the main character's grandmother again she's everything i am and everything i'm not <laughs> she is a crotchety mean old lady who may or may not be a witch and she's one of those characters who is like mean to literally everybody but her granddaughter and i just i love i love that chapter four which means i finished my anxiety incident which means i finished my first act which means i won nano <laughs> so i only recorded like two or three of the sprints that i did today but i did a total of seven different sprints 
and I'm finding that these really like persistent ongoing sprints throughout the day is super super helpful for me um, but they've got to be short so I'm finding like 15 to 20 minute sprints and doing those like I said a bunch of times throughout the day is just like boosting my productivity so much so Scorpio vlog so far has been a great success also look at that time I did it with just a few minutes to spare so it's the next morning and my lovely critique partner Jessica has already gotten back to me with feedback on the first chapter. So I thought that I would look over it with you guys and uh, share her thoughts and everything since <laughs> I guess this is also going to be something that scares me talking about, I don't know, my writing flaws, my writing insecurities publicly. Like, let's just go for it. Why not? Okay, here we go. I like broke Google Docs trying to zoom in. <laughs> now I have like half a page, <laughs> like half of my book has disappeared down the middle. You can only see half. Okay. Okay, I survived, it wasn't that scary. <laughs> she liked it all over, I think, I feel like she knew that I was very self-conscious about sending her such an early draft, so she was like very nice. She said that she loved it and she loved, um, there's certain little aspects of my main character's voice. She did say it's missing grounding in a clear line of storytelling, which I 100% agree with. I, I don't have to figure that out right now. That is not, that is not my responsibility right now. That is 2022 Lindsay's problem, not 2021 Lindsay. But she did say, we'll get to that later because it has all the ingredients it needs right now. Great job. But you have witnessed me overcoming a fear of sending a very early draft to somebody and it not being a total and complete disaster. So, you're welcome. So, um, I'm not really sure how to wrap up this video, but I would say this was wildly productive for me. Scorpio is kind of my lucky sign, right? The only planet in my birth chart that I have in Scorpio is Jupiter and Jupiter is about luck and growth and expansion and happiness and optimism. So uh, I don't think it's surprising that, I mean, if we're gonna be like, woo, I'm, I'm, it's not surprising that this worked for me in woo terms. <laughs> in realistic terms, the act of persistently working on my book um, with regimented sprinting obviously was going to lead to higher productivity and better results. I also found that remembering why I was passionate about my book really kept me going, especially when things in the deep and introspective section where I was trying to problem solve, <laughs> figuring out my chapter before I fearlessly sent it to my critique partner. Uh, that, that was really important to remember why I love the book and why I needed to keep going because um, sometimes you can't see the forest for the trees, right? And the fearlessness. Um, now I know that my book is not total trash, which I didn't think it was, but there's always just like a little inkling of, oh, maybe this is terrible and I made the wrong career choice. But my critique partner just gave me that little bit of hope and that little bit of, you're doing okay. So I really feel like Scorpio traits are really, really nice for writers to kind of own in on since these traits and Scorpio in general has a lot to do with like go getting ambition getting it done and um not letting you get in the way of your goal so this was a great sign to choose for writing and I'm really happy I did the experiment now the question is what is going to be the next sign that I do for the next zodiac experiment. I've decided I'm always gonna let you guys pick so drop down below what sign you want to see me do next. Like I said I've already done Sagittarius, we've done Scorpio. Leave down below which one you think would be the most fun. Maybe if it's your sun sign or your moon sign or your rising or whatever um, and you just want to see me do your sign, leave that below. I'm really looking forward to seeing who won and putting together a video for that. Thank you guys so much for sticking with this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I will see you in the next one. Bye.